This is the story of a bowl, an ordinary bowl that might have just languished on store shelves had it not been given an extraordinary chance to express itself. It burped. Everyone likes to talk about the burp, right? I don't know if I can get it to burp. That's the letting out of the air. It's a quiet burp. It's a girl burp. <laughs> it's not a boy burp. It's great design. It's the air tightness of the seal. At the parties when they were first introduced, the consultant would fill it half with water and they would actually shake it and tip it upside down to show the integrity of the seal fit and how good it is. And that just sold itself. The Tupperware Wonderlear Bowl, introduced back in 1946, would change our view of food storage forever. The slogan was, it's a wonder you could live without it. Everyone seems to have a Tupperware story. Whenever I saw my mom get out, the little Tupperware lolly tups maker, I knew it was summertime. We made popsicles all summer long in my house. I love that. To this day, I love those. The little rings that put on your finger, and then they had the little holes in between on the stick. Those were great. Not sold in department stores, Tupperware has always been creative in getting its product to market. It's just the three Ps, the product, the people, and the potty. And that, hasn't, that concept hasn't changed over 50 years. Tupperware was the brainchild of Earl Silas Tupper, a farming boy from New Hampshire who grew up to become a brilliant inventor with an insatiable curiosity about everything, even the lids of paint cans. Earl was a tinkerer, and he basically took the lid of a paint can and inverted it. Then he designed a container that he could put this inverted paint can on, made it out of soft polyethylene material, so it would have a nice fitting surface and a nice feel. That's how the burping bowl was born. This seal is the most classic one we have. But when it was first introduced, the bowl didn't sell. This idea that a product actually was liquid tight and would seal things in was completely new. I mean, people weren't exposed to that. So when you go to the store and you look at it, you, you didn't know what it was. So why am I going to buy that? The trick was that this bowl, with its unique seal, simply had to be demonstrated. The person who figured that out was Brownie Wise, a savvy saleswoman at another company. She was already selling truckloads of products at home parties. And in 1951, Earl Tupper took notice of her unique success and hired her to head up his sales division. Then they did something revolutionary in the retail world. They actually removed all Tupperware products from store shelves and began selling them only through home parties. It showcased the product in a whole new way. It also gave housewives in the 50s a chance to enter the workforce. Men were coming home from war and women who were now accustomed to working and filling all these factory jobs were told it was time for them to go back to the house and sit in the kitchen. And I don't think for a lot of people that worked real well. They had been exposed to an opportunity to go out and, and work and they liked it. And that was now taken away. And I think this assisted in filling a great void, you know, gave them the opportunity to work. And work they did. Under the direction of Brownie Wise, their sales force exploded. Tupperware parties became a cultural as well as a business phenomenon. And the key to their success? The salesperson now took on the role of party host. Shopping was suddenly fun. I love the fact that our company has the ability to really change how people live their lives and gives them an opportunity to live a better life, to leverage their potential. 65 years later, Tupperware is still going strong. It's sold in more than 100 countries around the world. The production process starts with plastic pellets brought by railcar to the Tupperware plant in Hemingway, South Carolina. Basically, it's polypropylene, polyethylene, and a number of engineering grade resins. Each recipe or formula is built based on what we recommend to put into the resin. But this plastic doesn't go into production until it passes some very stringent tests. First, the spec test, where the pellets are analyzed on a light table. We're basically looking for contaminants in the, in the pellets themselves and the uniformity of the pellet. Then they have to pass another test, developed by Tupperware, that measures how the material retains odors. We take a sample of materials and put it on the glass jar, and we put the cracker inside, and then we cover it with foil, and then we put this glass jar in the hot oven at 180 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes, and after that, we took out the uh, cracker and taste and see if there's an odor transfer test to the cocker coming from the material. 
finally, the viscosity test, where the plastic is checked for its flow rate once it melts. Too thick and it could gum up the injection molding machines. All this testing to make sure the plastic is just right and the bowl hasn't even been made yet. Now it's time to be brought into production. The pellets are mixed with color pigment, in this case a light blue, to create what they call a master batch. And then we also introduce a third element. We introduce any regrind or reclaim material to make sure that we use all the scrap that we generate during the production process. They do an initial run of a number of bowls, then use instruments to measure the color and clarity of the plastic, ensuring they've got just the right Tupperware hue. The pellets are then siphoned into the injection molding machines at the rate of about 80 pounds per hour. Once the pellets are received into the machine, they're melted down, and then they're injected under high pressure into a closed mold. And depending on the size of the item, it could take anywhere between 14 seconds and, and a minute before the parts come out cooled and they're packaged for, for the consumer. They make a whopping 14,000 Wonderlear bowls here a day. The mold that shapes each bowl is the key. Tupperware has about 10,000 different molds for all their products worldwide. We still have the original molds that are in production today. And if we do correct use and care of the molds, they'll last forever. But the bowls are only as good as the seals, which have to be made to precise specifications. A tiny miscalculation can mean the difference between freshness locked in or not. If it works, don't fix it. This one, this seal is probably the it's, it's the most classic one we have, and it's probably the most functional we have also. The seals undergo testing to see how well they'll survive in a scalding hot dishwasher. If you look at the old polyethylene, they would have a high tendency to warp in a dishwasher machine. So we've worked with a resin manufacturer to develop a specific formula so that after the dishwasher, the seals would lay flat. Once molded and cooled, the bowls arrive in packaging. This is actually the first time they're touched by human hands. Here they're given a quick visual once over, then wrapped in plastic and stored in shipping tubs, headed for the next group of party goers. The Wonderlear Bull comes with a full lifetime warranty, but most aren't ever returned. In fact, they're passed on to the next generation. I think there's so many childhood memories for a lot of people around the globe wrapped up in Tupperware products there's a trust and, and an emotion around it that it's hard to explain, I think. It's a heart, you know, there's a lot of heart to this company.